Okay, friends. As I say to my scholars, or not my scholars, but you, you know, you know what I mean, because I, I've, I mean, I've had these substitute business. You see that I'm home kind of early. It's four o'clock on a Wednesday here, and the moral of the story of this week and well, last couple of years is never copy New England Patriots model. Never copy that model. You want to try and do your own thing, and that's something that we kind of learned. As far as, you know, the Josh McDaniels experiment, there was a lot of things that happened this week, but I want to talk about that first. You know, the Raiders' shenanigans have been kind of rough. You know, it's now going to be Aiden O'Connell starting. Just got word of that, you know, not too long ago. And we got a lot of backups. There are going to be a lot of backups starting for a hot minute, it seems. Yeah, we're kind of... Kind of moving into something a little weird. We're in, we're getting into some weird territory, you know. I mean, Devontae Adams is frustrated. Derek Carr is gone. He he said he was done. He is out of there. Devontae Adams wasn't so lucky. He couldn't get out of the cesspool known as Las Vegas before the trade deadline, which was um, yesterday. At Around the same time, right? It was a little. It was a little more than twenty-four hours ago that the trade deadline happened. Um, and yeah, there weren't there weren't too many big things, you know, as far as big trades. Um, I do I do have a couple questions about some of them, but again, I'll kind of, you know, kind of justify my questions, you know, in a moment. Again, um, yeah, it's it's been rough for the Raiders. Um, I. I'm genuinely curious how in the world I'm, I don't know if I really want to watch the Raiders game at all. I don't think I am because I think it's in the late game, and I think the only other game is that Dallas Philly game, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, yeah, Cowboys defense, by the way, looking very good. Stafford got hurt, though. I think he hurt like his hand or something like that or his throwing arm. Um, speaking of guys that got hurt, unfortunately, Kirk Cousins done for the year. ACL injury, it was basically the same as Aaron Rodgers. Like that injury, you know, he got up and you know it looked like he just it just didn't move right, and you could see that you could literally see his ACL tear. So that that's rough. That is really rough, man. I, I'm I'm genuinely shocked. It, it you know, and again, speaking of speaking speaking of backups, where I'm going to talk about what seems to be Kirk Cousins' replacement at the moment, too, but Tyson Badgett, not the guy. You know, I would just put, just throw eggs at the wall at this point because, I mean, Tyson Badgett isn't the answer. Justin Fields isn't it. You know, it's, it's just not working. I, I have no idea, you know, I have no idea what teams like the Falcons are even doing right now. Desmond Britter. Finally got benched. He's a turnover machine. He's been a turnover machine all season long. Taylor Heineke, the Washington hero, you know, came in, did his thing. And even though the Falcons didn't win, it because of Will Levis of all guys, which is crazy to me. Will Levis, the guy that, you know, I don't think anybody, including myself, I didn't think the guy could ball. But he, he balled out. I, I I don't know I don't know how but he balled out crazy crazy stuff you know oh yeah David Ziegler you know the GM for the Raiders is also gone by the way um what else oh yeah Brock Purdy couple of bad picks you know you can't have those you know, the Forty Nine also got cooked by Jamar Chase I mean I know Purdy you know had George Kittle cooking. As well, you know, getting the big riddles. But yeah, the bad picks were probably the daggers, especially that last pick. And, and after that, Mixon came in and Chase Burrow, and it was it was a wrap after that. Like once the 49ers, you know, turned it over two times too many, it was over. It was over. Three straight L's, by the way, too. You know, I have no idea. I have no idea what happened to the 49ers. They looked really good against Dallas, and then they fall flat on their face the next week. And they've been falling flatter and flatter into the ground 
each of the past three weeks. You know, similarly, the Eagles continue to escape by the skin of their teeth again. Yes, Washington, you know, it, it was rough at times for Washington, but yes, Philly beats Washington, and I believe they swept Washington. I believe that's a clean sweep, 2-0. So I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. 49ers are inconsistent. The Eagles are very much inconsistent. We got a lot of inconsistent teams in the NFL right now. I'll tell you that much. Again, the trade deadline. I don't know as we're officially, we're officially into the point where we can say we're about halfway into the season. Um, Chase Young, no idea how the 49ers got him. Out of all the teams, I have no idea how the 49ers got him. That's insane. Montez Sweat. I have no idea how the Bears got him. How in the world are they even going to use him? Chase Young, I can understand, you know, why. Because, you know, you know, I can understand both of these trades. Because, one, Washington is trying not to have, you know, too much uh, dead space as far as free agency goes. You know, as far as cap goes, everything like that. Two, I get it. People are still concerned about Chase Young after the ACL tear. And three... I don't have a three because I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of wrapping my mind around these two trades here. And um, the other two really that were interesting as far as trades go, there were only like 15 or so trades at the deadline and none of them were super big. Like all the guys, you know, that wanted to be traded couldn't get traded. T Higgins couldn't get traded um, for one crazy. I, I know. Uh, but Rasul Douglas did. He might be able to help fill the gaping holes. And notice I capitalized the H there. Because, I mean, the Buffalo's defense has not been very good for a good chunk of the year because of all the injuries. So, yeah. Rather, they have, they've been resilient enough, but it's like, you know, some of the teams they've been facing have been kind of bad. So, you know, I mean, like the Giants, like... Uh, yeah, so when bet with you know games that get a little bit tougher, you know, for Buffalo, I think Douglas may help the vet, the veteran Rasul Douglas may help, and then Josh Dobbs. He played his heart out, you know, as Arizona's starter for the last couple of weeks, but now it seems it's going to be uh, either Kyler Murray or I forgot the other guy. It's not important because Arizona is still not very good. It's it's that's not a very good team there. But hey, the Vikings have a guy, you know, for pretty much the rest of the season, it looks like. So Josh Dobbs, you pretty much may be the guy. I'll tell you that much. And again, Aiden O'Connell. Jimmy Jimmy G is still kinda he's still kinda hurt, so you know, it'll be O'Connell's turn Sunday, you know. Uh, so that's that's that there, and then and then the games on Sunday they're going to be huge in all different sorts of ways. You have the Germany one of the two Germany games, Mahomes versus Tyreek. Yeah, it's not on home soil, but hey, we get that matchup anyway. So that's going to be fun, and then Geno, Geno Smith, Lamar Jackson. Really, really good stuff in this in that early window of that game, you know, between Seattle, which has been sneaky good, and the Baltimore Ravens, which have also been pretty good. A little inconsistent, but pretty pretty damn good, I'll say that much. And then, of course, you know, the Cowboys, that defense, Philly's offense is still dangerous enough to where you can, like, they can still put up 40 points like it, like they did. Like they nearly did against Washington. They nearly put up 40 against Washington. You know, and then, and of course, you know, Burrow and Allen in prime time, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, two eh, kind of defenses, you know, that could get torched and scorched by Stephon Diggs and Jamar Chase. But, you know, who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows how that game is going to go in prime time. So, 
you know, we got we we got football all day. So you know, it, you know, if you're a Central Time Zone enthusiast or you know a mountain, no wait, not a mountain. If you're an East Time Zone person, you know, now you see how the Pac-12 feels. You know. Each and every week, yet again, because remember those games in October? Yeah, we only had a we only had a couple week break from those. Um, next week, I don't think I'm gonna watch the game in Germany. I think I'm gonna sleep in, you know, because it's Indianapolis and, and New England. Like, no, not gonna not gonna subject myself to that, you know. So there we go. That's week nine in a nutshell. Again. We got some. We got some good storylines. I'll tell you that much. We got some good things to go for. Of course, you know I'm rooting for my Cowboys against Philadelphia. Of course, you know I think Tyreek and Mahomes is going to be good. Of course, there's going to be some good stuff. There's going to be some crazy stuff like there is every week in the NFL. There, there, it, there just is. There just is crazy stuff each and every single week of the season. So that'll do it for me. Um, I'm gonna upload this. And get on out of y'all's hair. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of my Wednesday. Hope y'all are enjoying the first day in November too.